It's an honor to be here with all of you. I did want to mention one person. I was thinking someone who really uh, walks their faith and not only believes but leads, and that's my good friend, Congressman, Congressman Ellison, and he's right over here. So I hope that uh, I hope someday, uh, sometime today, you'll be able to hear from Keith Ellison. But right now, we are celebrating the role that faith plays in our decision making creating our core values and serving as a foundation for our commitment to fairness and justice. By coming together today, uh, you celebrate your faith in our democracy. And I know that some of our faith in democracy have been shaken lately. Certainly mine has. But then I want, as I listened to today, as you talked about how it's time to believe, I just want you to be able to leave with a little sense that there is a reason to believe in our democracy. I'm just going to use a few examples of what I've seen in the last uh, year and a half. The first is that I go to the Senate prayer breakfast every week, and it's a time when people put aside their differences, they come together on Wednesday morning, and we get to know each other in a way that's very quiet, and we don't ever share what goes on there, uh, but it really gave me faith uh, that there's goodness in a lot of the people that I work with every day. Uh, the second uh, is a uh, case that I got involved with, and that was the case of that little girl, Amy Taylor, uh, that got and ended up dying after she sat on a pool drain uh, in a swimming pool right here in the Twin Cities. And her family just wouldn't give up hope, and they're a family of faith, I can tell you that right now. And they wanted something to happen in her name, and they would call their dad, her dad, Scott Taylor, while she was still alive, would literally call me every week on my cell phone in the United States Senate to push to get that pool safety bill through. And you just couldn't say no to them. And I worked with some of the Republicans for a bill that was kicking around for four years. And we made it so much stronger because we'd known what had happened to her. And the proudest moment I had in the whole time I've been in the Senate is standing in that cloakroom last December and calling Scott Taylor and telling him that that bill had passed and that the President was signing it into law. Another moment to give you some faith in our democracy was the day that we were voting on the children's health care. And I know it's something that Isaiah cares a lot about. And we've been trying to get that bill through. We put it up two, three times, and we were unsuccessful. And we were one vote short of blocking a filibuster. And that day, the doors of the Senate opened up and in rocked Ted Kennedy. And he hadn't come back since he was diagnosed with brain cancer. He was in the middle of treatment. And he, that line of the Senate, he stood there and said, yay. And all the people on the other side stood there, and one by one, they started changing their votes, and we passed the expansion of Children's Health. And then just this, just this last two weeks, something that we've been waiting for so long in Minnesota, and the millions of people living in the shadows of mental illness have been waiting so long to get passed. We passed the Pell Carlos from Mental Health Care and Death. Be done so much work that you do every day to end discrimination and promote economic opportunity for all, right, Keith? To end the war and bring our troops home, to reform our health care system, to end the skyrocketing health care premiums that have kept so many people off of health care, to end this global warming and act on climate change and create a sustainable future for our children and our grandchildren. National Prayer Breakfast for our world leaders that we must all remember the Ojibwe philosophy and that is that great leaders make their decisions not based on decisions for this generation but for seven generations from now and that's what we are doing now in Washington. I want to end with one story. One of the things that I hope will change in the next few years, is that we'll be paying more attention to the conflicts around the world, like what we've seen in Darfur. We've made some steps, but we have to do so much more. And I'll end with this story. Many of you have seen the movie Schindler's List, a story of Oskar Schindler, a German factory owner during World War II. Well, at the beginning of that war, he thought he could make a lot of money off that war. But as the Nazi genocide became clear to him what was going on, 
He started using his factories to promote, to promote jobs for Jewish citizens to keep them out of the concentration camps. He basically hid them in his factories. And at the end of the film, there is this scene where Oscar Schindler is leaving his factory. It's the end of the war, and the people whose lives he saved wanted to give him a present. And they collected all the little pieces of gold that they could find, and they melded, or welded a ring for him, and they gave it to him. And he took the ring at the end of the movie, and he just broke down in tears. And all he could say is, I should have done more. I should have done more. His lesson remains with all of us today. We should never have to look back and say, I could have done more. For the past 20 years, Isaiah and people like Jay Schmidt and Doran Trance and so many who have refused to stand idly by, you have stood up and loudly proclaimed that we must do more. So I just want you to know, when I go back to Washington next week, I will take this with me and the inspiration that you've given me and all of us on this stage. We can do so much more. Thanks. Thanks.